I want to tell you a story. Fifteen years ago, on December 7th, I was ordained a priest at the Cathedral of All Souls in Asheville, North Carolina. Like any new priest, I was energetic and eager, ready to lead the Anglican charge for Jesus in Western North Carolina. My first assignment was as a vicar of Church of the Advocate, which is a dynamic ministry to the homeless in downtown Asheville. This ministry was supported by several parishes in the diocese, and All Souls Cathedral gave me an office, and I was considered a member of the cathedral staff, though with few demands made on me by All Souls. Still, the dean, Todd Donatelli, was my supervisor. On the 23rd of December, 15 years ago, an urgent call was taken at All Souls. The priest at St. David's in Cullowee, North Carolina, had a family emergency and needed to travel to the West immediately. He was calling with the hope that a priest from the cathedral could take the Christmas Eve service at St. David's. Again, he was calling on the 23rd of December. Dean Donatelli met me in the hallway at All Souls and told me of the pastoral plea of this colleague from Cullowee. A priest from the cathedral needed to go to St. David's the next day and preach and preside at the Christmas Eve Eucharist. Which priest would that be? Recalling that 16 days earlier, I had promised to obey the bishop and other ministers who may have authority over me and my work. It did not take me long to realize which priest was going to Cullowee. I had never been to Cullowee. I had never preached or presided at a Christmas Eve Eucharist. But the people of St. David's needed a priest and I would have to do. There's a first time for everything. The drive from Cullowee to Asheville is just long enough to panic, (laughs) but not long enough to come up with any creative solutions from panicking. (laughs) So I prayed to God and asked God for help to get me through what I knew was going to be a priestly disaster. But then I remembered how God had helped Episcopal clergy for decades. It's called the Altar Guild. (laughs) Amen. I would ask the Altar Guild members at St. David's Cullowee to help me, to show me how they do Christmas Eve there. They would get me through. So I arrived at St. David's and was quickly met by the senior warden. She was glad to see me, and then I asked her how to find the altar guild. She took me down a hallway near the church and pointed me to a group of older women. Behold, my salvation stood before me in Christmas sweaters. (laughs) However, before I could admit to them my need... Before I could share with them my questions and show my ignorance, the chair of the St. David's Altar Guild said to me, Hun, we're going to get out of your way. (laughs) We know you have your own way of doing this. (laughs) And like announcing angels from on high, they disappeared into the night. (laughs) We will get out of your way. We know you have your own way of doing this. Yesterday, I was ordained the fifth bishop of the Episcopal Diocese from East Tennessee. So for almost 24 hours, I have served in this capacity. At this moment, it might be tempting for some well-meaning East Tennessee Episcopalian to say to me, we will get out of your way. (laughs) We know you have your own way of doing this. 
But here's the thing. I need you. I need to join you. I need to join you in the way. Not my way or your way, but the way of Jesus. The way of Jesus lived out in these holy mountains. I have come to be your bishop, but I've not come with my way or my agenda. I have come to be your bishop and join you in the way of Jesus. And here's the thing. The way of Jesus is always found in a community. Just like I needed the altar guild at St. David's 15 years ago, so today I need you to make space for Susan and me to join you in being a Christ-centered cathedral of prayer and action. We begin our life together hearing the words of Jesus from St. Mark's Gospel. And while Jesus is addressing an ancient community, he is also speaking to us. He speaks to them and to us of an end that is approaching. For the first people hearing St. Mark's Gospel, it is the end of the temple. It is the destruction of the temple. How could there be life after the temple is destroyed? And yet Jesus speaks to them of life after the temple. The temple may be destroyed, but Jesus remains near to them. And so he speaks of an end that will yield a new day and a new beginning. We are living in a new advent. Many things are ending in our world. And we know it is advent not simply because of the church calendar, but because of all those things that are ending in the world in which we inhabit now. For too many people in our city and in our region, the sun has grown dark and the moon does not give its light. If we look out across our globe, we see that we are in a new era of nuclear brinkmanship. And if we cast our vision closer to home, we see that a storm of opioid abuse and addiction is raging with no sign of letting up. And despite what the evangelistic roadside signs tell us, God seems to have lost interest in us. And in such an age, we possess the tools of social media and are more connected than ever, easily in touch with each other, turning our globe into one vast neighborhood. And yet so many of us use those tools of connection to let each other know that we feel cut off from each other. We feel alone, cut off from neighbor and the God of our ancestors. Jesus tells us this end is not the end. This moment is a time when Jesus is drawing near again already at the city gates. You all, St. John's, has stood in the center of the city since 1826. Since 1826, there have been many endings and many beginnings. And St. John's has stood in the center. Since 1826, there have been booms and busts. There have been wars, both those fought close to home and those fought across the globe. And still St. John's has stood in the center. Since 1826, downtown has grown and it has died and it has grown again. And St. John's has stood in the center. Jesus tells us that he is very near at the city gate. And we are in the midst of the city at its very center. So that despite that sense that we might be on our own, the Christ is near. So near to us. Jesus is so near to us and he reminds us of the call to stay awake, to resist sleeping while the new advent is approaching. The sun has grown dark and the moon does not shine, but that is not the end. That is simply a reminder to keep awake. Anxiety might be the latest fashion craze and the Holy One may seem to be on vacation, but that's simply a reminder to keep awake. 
I don't know about you, but if I try to keep awake on my own, I always fail. When Susan and I lived in Black Mountain, we lived on the wrong side of the mountain in the winter, and we had sort of a goal of we should at least wait till 5.15 before putting on the pajamas. <laughs> we love to sleep at our house. We like all sleep team. We're professional sleepers. Because on my own, I prefer to sleep. I love the comfort of my bed. I love to disengage from the world and close my eyes. But Jesus is not suggesting that you pull an all-nighter on your own. He's inviting a community gathered around bread and wine, gathered around the teachings of Jesus, gathered around the witness that the resurrection is in our midst to keep awake together. It is only together, encouraging each other, lifting up each other, bearing the burdens of each other, that true wakefulness is possible. When we baptize, when we confirm, when we ask questions of candidates and sponsors, all those questions really involve the question, are you awake? Yesterday, when questions were asked of me before I was made a bishop, the real question asked again and again and again is, are you awake? Since 1826, a people gathered around the name St. John has been awake in the center of the city. So now is not the time to fall asleep. God has not brought you this far to abandon you now. The Christ is near, near to the gate. And the Christ is near, closer even than the city gate. The Christ is in our midst if we simply keep awake and watch. As your bishop, I pledge to you to keep awake. As the cathedral of this diocese, I ask that you support me in the teaching and caring ministry entrusted to a bishop and for this place to be the center of that work. I cannot do this alone. Left alone, I will fall asleep. Together, together, we will keep awake and we will greet the Christ again as he finds us in the center of the city, greeting all in the name of Jesus who come through the gates, all who come through the gates, seeking shelter, seeking hope, seeking a community that is awake. So let us follow the way of Jesus together. Together, let us renew the apostolic work of pro proclaiming resurrection, practicing it with joy and grace, with humility and mercy, with love and hope. Amen.